Excellent. Uh, so here's, I guess, uh, the URL for William's slides, for those of you who want to follow along. Good. All right. I was wondering what ghetto way I could use to get a really large font. Um, okay. So, okay, so I guess, uh, so I'm here to talk about some projects I've been working on at Mozilla. Um, I guess I have a bit of a different perspective from many of you in that I mostly work on testing of the browser itself rather than applications running in the browser or separate applications running on the device. But I think some of what I've been working on here might be applicable to what you, you guys are working on. So I'm definitely interested in whatever follow-up conversations you might want to have with me after I give my presentation. So there's, uh, I guess there's two things I'm going to talk about today. Um, the first is something called IDATicker, which I've been using to measure the real world performance of uh, the Firefox browser on mobile platforms like Android. And the second is something which uh, I sort of wrote to support IDATicker, but which I think might be useful elsewhere, and it's called Orangutan. And it's sort of a, an event synthesis framework for Android, which I think overcomes some of the limitations that I've, uh, that I've encountered on the platform, in particular the limitations I found with uh, Google's monkey tool. So uh, with that, let's, let's begin. So, okay, so problem definition. Like at Mozilla, we actually really care a lot about the performance of our browser. Um, like just to give you an anecdote, like, when I tell people that I work at Mozilla, I sort of get, I can think of like three answers that I get, like in response. One is, I, I don't know what that Firefox is, I don't know what Mozilla is. That's probably the most common. Um, <laughs> second is, oh yeah, I, I really like, I really use and like Firefox, it's great. That's the one I like to hear. The third is, I have switched to Chrome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, and usually, well, of course, the, common follow-up question is why, and usually they say, well, you know, it's so much faster. And, well, I, you know, I, putting my promotional cap on, I'd say, you know, try the latest version of Firefox, it's really a lot better. But certainly for a while that was, you know, more or less true, and that's, you know, created a lasting perception in people's minds. So, you know, we recently actually, re uh, we recently launched a new version of the Android browser, and it was very important for us to be competitive, you know, when it comes to performance, because nobody's going to care about us, you know, if we're like, you know, five times slower than the stock browser. Uh, so, but I guess that immediately leads to the question is like, how do you measure performance, right? Like, you know, we have, when it comes to benchmarking, I think, I think the industry is kind of in a really sorry state. Like, the benchmarks that most people use don't really measure the things that people care about. Like, like, I don't know about, I guess everybody's different, but like, 90% of the time when I'm using my mobile web browser, I'm like browsing news sites. And I think the same is true for a lot of people. But like our benchmarks, you know, they measure things like OpenGL games or like how many primes you can factor like in a second with JavaScript. Uh, you know, these aren't things that, you know, really directly translate into user experience. Sometimes they might be indicative of user experience, but they're, they're only loosely correlated with what the user actually perceives. And then, uh, uh, you know, um, so, so, so the question, here's a, like an example of something that, a use case that I think we really should care about. Like, when I'm browsing through like a news site like CNN.com, like how quickly does it respond to the pan gesture? Does it appear smooth? Like, and there is actually a really big difference between browsers on Android, like if you look at say the stock Android browser in 2.2, if you did the same thing that I did just there, it'll be like really janky and really slow. If you do it on something like Chrome or Firefox for Android, it's actually going to be, you know, really fast and pleasant. So there is a quantifiable like difference there. And I think, you know, I mean, stuff like games are fun and everything like that and are becoming increasingly important, but we should also be optimizing for what, you know, the use cases that, you know, are most common today. Um, so, but, you know, the question is, how do we do this? Um, 
So I, I guess you know like the answer that we've normally used at Mozilla is to like instrument the browser somehow. So like for the desktop Firefox, we have this framework called Talos, which you know just basically loads web pages and sees when they get to a certain internal state called Moz after paint, which indicates that you know the page is you know fully displayed and rendered. Um, you know, and that's that's an interesting test. I mean, obviously, that's something that you care about. Like when you load a page, you want it to you know render quickly. But how do you translate that across browsers? Like, how do you know how we're doing against the competition? Well, like maybe you could instrument Chrome or something like that in the same way. But like, what about a closed browser like Safari or or IE? Um, so, I guess we sort of decided to take back a step back about a year ago at Mozilla, and we decided to create like. A framework that I guess is just more black box. I mean, you know, less instrumented. I guess you know to use some of the terminology we've been using earlier today. Um, and the idea is let's simulate real in user interactions with the, the mobile on, on the mobile. Like you know, actually simulate like a real pan gesture. Don't like just put some JavaScript in the web page or something like that. And then record video of the browser in action. So like you know. Ideally, at like you know a high frame rate, so you can really, really get it, delve deeply into the results and measure things uh, carefully, and then analyze the results for things like frame rate, uh, checkerboarding, startup, and load time. So, what do those things mean? Well, frame rate, I guess you could just say it just means how many frames are different in the period of a capture. So, like for something like the test that I just showed you. We actually, the, the video capture framework that I'm using, like actually, you know, captures each each frame that's outputted over HDMI and then copies it to an image file. So you can compare those files against each other, and you can see something like this. Um, I was told that this isn't self-explanatory, so <laughs> uh, so I guess what you have here is, you know, these are two frames, you know, right next to each other. And then the thing on the right is the far right is the difference between the two. So a good use basically you can say the more frames that are different, generally speaking, the smoother the animation is. So like as I was saying, like the stock Android browser and like pre-ICS Android was quite janky. So you're going to see a lot of frames that are the same in a capture test like this one. The other thing that we really care about is checkerboarding. Well, if if your if your browser internally like doesn't block on drawing, so that you actually get a smooth pan motion as you scroll down, you don't necessarily have enough time to completely redraw the page um, before you've zoomed pan down to an area. And some browsers, like I'm really picking on the early Android browser, which I feel bad about, but the new version is much better. So anyway. Uh, but the old version, you know, like it would just wait for everything to redraw before it would display something new, which is why you see the jank. But like the, you know, a newer one, if you're good about it, you'll at least let the user see see a reaction first. But if it's not done drawing, there'll be a period before you see, you know, the page fully redrawn. So we kind of want to measure that, right? The lower the value of that, the better. Uh, and you can do that by, you know, tr trying to search through the frame for you know areas of the screen that have not completely redrawn. So a good example of that would be here. So I, I, this is basically a hacked up uh, version of a page which sets the background color to magenta. And then after we've done this capture, we search through the capture to try to find areas that are magenta, i.e. undrawn. So you know here we see that eye tickers you know recognize you know these areas here as being not completely drawn. And then the last one that you know I, I want to talk about is startup and load time. So, you know, of course you can instrument a browser internally to call a web callback or something like that when it's loaded, but you know, between the user like pressing on the app icon and seeing the web page or the user, you know, clicking go after entering a URL, there's lots of interesting things happening in between that we care about. So here, for example, it's a video of Firefox starting up. You can see that. 
can see that like before everything is fully rendered around here, you know, you can see something right away. And that's important from a user's perspective. Like the new version of Firefox, people are much happier with it because they see something much faster. The old one, you know, you would wait for like, a lot, you might potentially wait for like, you know, 10 or 15 seconds before you saw the browser come up, like anything at all, which, you know, is not a good user experience. So this is something that we care about and we want to measure as accurately as possible. Um, so yeah, so how does this whole system work? Well, it's, it's actually pretty simple um, and inexpensive. Uh, basically, we took like a pretty stock Dell desktop system. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like under $1,000. Um, and then we took what's called a Decklink Blackmagic Super Extreme 3D video capture card. I don't think Super was in there. But <laughs> it's, 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 quite, it's relatively expensive. It's about $1,000. But it's most importantly for our use case, it can capture both 720p and 1080p video at 60 frames per second. So we can, at, with very little lossage, like in terms of, uh, you know, it's full RGB 32 bit stuff that it's capturing. So, you know, you can really get an accurate result to measure. And then, you know, everything's running on Linux. Um, Ubuntu, the test runner analyzer is written in Python with a bit of C++ and uh, JavaScript mixed in just for integration with uh, various, well, the C++ is for, for, for the video capture part, just because that needs to be very efficient. And the JavaScript is just a little bit of harness code that we use to move the whole thing along. And then um, the other side of this is this library that I wrote called Orangutan for simulating events. So, yeah. It, I, I probably many of you are familiar with Google's monkey runner tool, which is actually a whole bunch of different things, but among other things, it lets you simulate gestures like, you know, pan, drag, tap, all these other things. The problem with it that I found is that it actually doesn't synthesize events with full fidelity. Like, most of the time it works fine, but like, if you try to use monkey runner with, say, for example, Google Chrome for Android, it just totally doesn't interpret the swipe gesture correctly. At least last I tried it. Um, it seems like when Monkey Runner generates events for use by the system, it's, um, it doesn't actually put timing information on them, so it just gets garbled, which most apps don't care about, but Chrome really does. So I'm like, well, how am I gonna solve this? What am I gonna do? And this, I guess I just decided to write my own thing. So I, I looked at, well, how, how does Android understand events anyway? What's the lowest level? And I found that Android actually just uses the standard Linux dev input uh, system. Uh, so basically all that involves is just sending little byte packets to this device on the system. And then the upper levels of the operating system will interpret those as events. It'll synthesize them and say, oh, look, you were tapped down here for a while, here for a while, here for a while. Oh, you must be doing a swipe. So. Basically, orangutan is a library for taking gesture descriptions, like swipe here, tap here, and then turning those into little byte packets, and then you let Android, or you know, Firefox OS, if you're using IDTicker for Firefox OS, interpret that you know, as it will. And I found it actually works really well. Um, and I'm curious if other people might find it useful. Up to now, we've only been using it with IDTicker. But yeah, that's... Uh, that's sort of like, I guess it, maybe that was kind of abstract, so I guess I'll just show you where all of this sort of comes together for, for Mozilla. I wrote this tool on top of IDATicker called the IDATicker dashboard, and what it lets you do is it lets you see the performance measurements that this tool is creating across two different phones, across all of these different tests. So this is actually checked on a fairly daily basis by our graphics developers to see uh, you, you know how, how we're relatively doing in performance. So like, you can see that when I first started writing this tool, I guess back in April, May, like on certain benchmarks, we really didn't do well at all. But you know, slowly we've been optimizing our drawing and like how we're drawing and when we're drawing to the point where things are really good. I guess I should say that this is measuring checker, the checkerboarding uh, issue that I was mentioning earlier lag in uh, drawing times. 
But, uh, and one of the neat things about these tools is you can actually, if you see a result that looks odd, you can actually see the video. <coughs> and then perhaps also interestingly, I've, I don't know if you, you probably haven't heard of this. Uh, one of our engineers, uh, wrote this tool called the uh, Gecko Profiler, which basically lets you see exactly what Firefox is doing at uh, a, you know, a particular time. So this is, for example, is the Gecko uh, Profiler results for um, the capture that I just showed you. Uh. And of course, this video is absolutely huge. Shoot. <laughs> no, that's not gonna help. Well, anyway, it would be more impressive if I could show what was below this, but <laughs> what these are are hotspots, essentially, in the code. So you can see here that, like, this indicates that the internal browser engine is doing a lot of work. And if the view below was visible, you could uh, see exactly what it was doing at that time. In this case, on this website, it was, was spending a lot of time doing gradient fills. So we could see that that, you know, that code was taking, taking the lion's share of the time. So it's really useful for tracking down regressions. Like if we see that the browser got slower all of a sudden, we can actually pinpoint the area of the code that's slow. And I could see this being you know, useful even if you're testing your own website, right? You're wondering, why is this so slow on Firefox? Well, a tool like this could actually show you. In this case, the solution would be not to use gradient fills. They're really, really slow on mobile. How are you doing for time? What's that, plenty of time? Okay. Cool. So yeah, where does this work? Well, Android, obviously, that's what I've been talking about. And we also have an experimental version of IDATicker in the works for Firefox OS. One of the nice things about the orangutan library that I wrote is that it works on such a low level that basically any <coughs> Linux-based mobile phone with the, the input subsystem that I mentioned will work with it. So since Firefox OS actually reuses much of Android's user space and kernel space, orangutan just works on this platform, which is great. Uh, so yeah, I think that's actually about it for my presentation part. Um, so I'll take questions, or if people don't have any questions, maybe I'll ask you questions. So you kind of already mentioned it, but I wanted a clarification. Where do you see this uh, being taken for actual web app testing? So, so, you know, like say for testing, like for a newspaper testing their own website or something like yeah. that? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think, I, I, I don't think normal web developers will ever use IDATicker directly. I mean, I, I kind of, but I could kind of see us factoring out components of IDATicker. You know, I, I guess similar to what, you know, Frank did, right? Like he, he found that this component of Frank was generally useful, so he factored it out into a library that anybody could use. <coughs> I could see the same thing happening with IDATicker, like factor out the video capture part, so, you know, as a component that people could use in their own testing framework. Uh, how would I, how, what's the mechanism for sending these, these gesture commands to the, to the device uh, for, for around? How close to how, the... What's the mechanism for sending... How close to the metal? No, like, like, like if, I, if I, if right now I'm really excited and I want to write a, uh, an Android testing tool using this, uh, how would I send the gesture commands to the, uh, to the, to a phone that's been instrumented with, with this library? Okay, so... Yeah, orangutan is basically just a big hack, but it might one day become more than that. So if you look on an Android phone, you'll find that there's two utilities on it. There's one called get event, and there's one called set event. And if you run get event, like just on an Android phone on an ADB prompt, and you do a swipe gesture or something like that, you'll just see a huge spew of like events happening. Um, and then if you know, 
it, it kind of looks really meaningless at first, but like it's, it's if you read the documentation on the dev input system um, of, for Linux, it's actually makes it pretty straightforward. Like, you know, it's stuff like what's the pressure of the touch? You know, like what's the, what's the X and Y coordinate, things like that. And then, you know, from that low level description, higher levels of Android will assemble that into, you know, oh, I interpret that as a swipe gesture. So what orangutan does is it just, it's really a simple C program that takes, you know, a description of a gesture like swipe down from here to here, you know, with this number of intermediate steps at this velocity, you know, over this period of time. And then it'll, you know, generate a series of, you know, low level Android events like what I described and then send it right to the device port. Like it's, it's about 150 lines worth of C code or something like that. It's very simple. I mean, I, I wrote it just because it was what I needed for IDA ticker. I think to actually be useful to you know, the world, it would probably have to become something more than that. Um, and I, I actually almost feel like this is something that Google should have written. Like it's, it's kind of what I feel Monkey Runner should have been, or Monkey Runner should have had a mode like this. But you know, if we have to write something like this ourselves to do what we need to do, then well, let's just do it. You mentioned that the way you input is just using slash dev, like you would on any Linux box. Are there any read capabilities in the screen that you could similarly harness? Like any? So, sorry. Uh, so, so you can send it commands, but as to getting at like what DOM is on the screen or anything like that, is there any? Oh yeah, orangutan works at a much lower level than that. Like okay. you have to have some a priori knowledge of you know where, where the components are. are and stuff. I mean. Like the way I think we'll use it with Firefox OS is that we'll probably have like something like a marionette layer, you know, that which will tell us, you know, where the different components on screen are. And then we could sort of combine that with something like orangutan to actually do the gestures at a lower level from, you know, this high level description of what the scene graph looks like. All right. Thank you, William. Okay, thank you.